welcome. Welcome back to Artistic License, my stream on Thursdays where we do a little bit of whatever I want. Um, today, we're going to be getting back into Mist 2021. I hope you guys are ready. Welcome in, Kendra. Thank you so much for the lurk. I see you there. Um, I have to show you guys something that I got on my trip um, up to Gatlinburg for my husband's birthday. Look at this. It's a little kitty cat tea seeper. Oh my God. My tea's actually been seeping for a while. So I'm going to take this guy out now and actually drink this tea. Here we go. Koneko, welcome, welcome. Oh, you're finishing up the Nintendo Direct. Oh, what announcements did they make? I'm really curious. I um, I was going to check on it after the stream, but I don't, I don't know as of yet what they said. And I got some fancy teas too. This one is a black tea that tastes like creme brulee. It is delicious. It's really, really good. Um, also, once again, this stream, thank you again to Infamosti for providing that starting soon music. I'll put that into the chat right here so you guys can see that. If you would like, go give it a listen. Um, it's a it's really good. It's a really good remix of the um the tune that you put in for the spaceship, which we're going to see this stream. All right, guys, as you guys know, we love to start with a little quiz here. And today is no exception. We are doing which 90s female alternative rock singer are you? And if you would like to do it too, here we go. There's the link to that. You're welcome to join me. Oh, no, baby cam is still on from last time. Oops. <laughs> if anybody, guys, if any of you guys want that on, um, you're welcome to do your channel points for it. But no, no babies are in position right now. They're still a little bit hyper from dinner. <laughs> All right, let's get started on this. Which 90s female alternative rock singer are you? Um, I chose this one because we're going to do some musical puzzles. Uh, and this game is from the 90s. So there we go. It seemed right. Lunar, welcome. Congratulations on the first. So happy to have you here today. I missed you guys on Saturday, but I'm very sorry. I only missed you a little bit because I was having lots of fun. <laughs> we're having a birthday party, so you know. All right, what's your instrument of choice? A Rickenbacker guitar, the screaming sound of my own voice, piano, Venus Fender guitar, or acoustic guitar? Um, I guess I would say a Rickenbacker, although I don't play any of these and I haven't sang in um, forever, like literally since I was a child. Um, I did sing in the church choir for a while, I did handbells, and I played clarinet for a long time in uh, middle school and in high school. So clarinet is probably the instrument that I actually uh and was the best at but it's been so long now you know what i mean you're so thrown off from not having a stream on saturday that's too funny lunar y'all can't be planning your whole days around me that's crazy jane yes clarinet did you play clarinet jane when you were when you were a kid which one of these places do you currently want to be in an 80s goth club an empty church which is completely empty apart from the sound of the harpsichord i'm playing on a farm tending to the new lambs in a quiet room, alone with nothing but my thoughts and my doll collection. I was into this until it said doll collection. Um, although I do have a lot of plushies over there. I'm not going to lie. Maybe if that said plushie connection, collection, I'd be okay. Um, a rowdy rock concert. Uh, I actually think we're going to go with this one. It's the closest to my vibe. Um, I just wish this was like plushies instead of dolls. But here we go. Um, I did, but I hid under the desks. They wouldn't take me to band and got counted... Base net, oh, but sent for days, and my mom got a call. It was like, what the fuck is your daughter? What the fuck are you, Jane? I agree. <laughs> what good? Oh, absent. <clears throat> You're crazy. Oh my gosh. I bet you were good, though. I bet you were good. Good player. Uh, what's your favorite genre of music? Metal, goth, anything as long as it's loud. Elegant rock, punk, pop classical, but sometimes I tend to listen to other genres. I don't know, grunge, new wave, emo. Um, it's really difficult for me to choose between punk, pop, and emo, because I was definitely a Warped Tour kid. Um, but we're going to go with punk. I guess that's the closest, you know, but really it's like a combo of these three. You know what I'm saying? All right, what's your childhood like? Decent enough, I suppose. Turbulent, to say the least. I had a lot of problems with my family and dreamed of escaping. Oh, that's sad. Um, it was quite good until I got a wicked stepmother. Uh, I grew up on a farm. I was a cheerleader and also a straight-A student. Fairly normal, although my family were very religious. I was a child prodigy, but also rebellious. Um, I guess decent enough. I mean, it was fine. You know what I mean? I feel like a, a normal level of dysfunction. <laughs> a normal level of dysfunction. <clears throat> I was a Warped Tour kid. I was a Warped Tour kid, yeah. We went every summer uh, while I was in high school. 
All right, what's your best trait? My friendliness. I tend to be as nice as possible to everyone. My unwavering honesty, although this sometimes gets me in trouble. My passion, my artistic talent, my charm. I can talk my way into anything. Um, I would say my passion. Like, I think my my uh, my best trait is that uh, I just kind of keep going. <laughs> Energizer bunny over here. I think that's that's it. All right, what's your fashion sense? I'm 100% goth. Couture, ball gowns, or pajamas, there's no in-between. I go for the Joan Jett in the 1980s look. I care more about comfort than aesthetics. I live in the color black. Ribbons in my hair, Mary Jane shoes, baby doll dresses, heavy mascara, and deep red lipstick. My aesthetic changes often. I look like a farm girl at the best of times. I mean, none of these really match me. Um, even when I was, like, totally doing the whole goth thing, I was still, like, a black-pink kind of goth. I was never, like, you know, full-on 100%. Y'all know what I'm saying? Um, I'm definitely here for the pajamas, but not here for the couture ball gowns. I do care about comfort, but I care about aesthetics too. So I don't know. I guess, um, I guess we'll go with the goth one. All right. Pick a song lyric. Of course, there's song lyrics in this one. All dressed in red, always the bride, off with her head. All dressed in white, off with her head. I know you're right. Everything you do is right, but everything I do is true. Ooh, I like that one. I dreamed that I was you. I dreamed your ego died. Sad who loves you more than I do. I know you lied. Oh, it's a sad one. Kay, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, show me the things I've been missing. Show me the ways I forgot to be speaking. Oh, that's really long. I'm not reading all that. Um, put on that dress. I'm going out. I'm dancing. Starting off red. Okay, I get it. I mean, these are really long. And I, I want that one. I already know it. What's your worst trait? Sometimes I can say things that come off as mean even without realizing it. My bluntness, by bluntness, it's led to people thinking I'm a worse person than I actually am. My aloofness, I tend to disappear into the shadows. My self-destructive tendencies, people think I'm weird. Definitely this one. Definitely people think I'm weird. All right, which one of these is your biggest fantasy? Living in a fairy tale college with my beloved, with a large flower-filled garden and many pets. Spending my days crocheting and making heart-shaped pies. Oh, I do kind of like that. I don't know how to crochet, but I do kind of like that. I sp to spend my life wearing expensive lingerie, going to the theater, anointing myself with perfume. Oh, no, no, no. Um, I dream of stardom. I want to act, to sing, to design, to become somebody that everyone knows. Um, no. I do want to do all these things, but not for everyone to know me, just to be able to create, you know what I'm saying? I just want to be successful in my chosen field. Also to make peace with my demons. Oh, no, it's this one. This is the answer. I dream of becoming a queen and getting revenge on those who have hurt me. Oh, my gosh. All I want is to be able to express myself, to be able to do what I love. But these are kind of the same thing. I mean, it's really this one, though. Yeah, okay, we'll go with this one. All right, pick a dream house. Anywhere suitable for displaying my own artistic works. A cozy cottage on a farm. Just a normal house, an abandoned cathedral in Ireland. Ooh, fancy. A little house somewhere in California countryside. No, I just, I just want a normal house. Yeah, that question really did define everything, Jane. I agree. Um, what do you sing about? Anything I feel like female sexuality, my struggles with religion, my own life, the dark side of humanity, I shade people who have wronged me, my relationships, issues that affect women. Anything. I don't, I don't, um, I don't uh, sequester myself to one particular thing. All right, pick a quote. I was burned for a witch in another life, I'm sure. I found my inner bitch and I ran with her. Making me into a role model is putting too much importance on what I see as work in progress. Definitely agree with that. A lot of people make me angry, just people in general. The things they say, hypo hypocritical things, just in everyday life. You hear some people say something, you go, oh God, how can you be like that? So a lot of people think I'm a bitch. <laughs> um, I've always seen the voice as a powerful tool. Each of us has an opportunity to use our voice to make a powerful impression. The way a painter uses his brush, I believe an artist is an artist. Oh, I really like that. Um, but I think this is more fitting for me. All right, how important is success to you? I don't necessarily want to be at the top of my field, but I do strive for perfection in what I do. I want to be the best version of myself. Uh, not very. I just want to do what I love, success or not. Success means everything to me. I'll do anything to achieve my dreams. It's important enough that I keep trying and trying, even though it's hard. As long as my friends like my work, I'm good. Oh, I vibe with that so hard, y'all. <laughs> um, I'm unsure if I'll be successful in the future, so I make as much as I can of the opportunities I'm given now. Yeah, definitely that. Like if I could, if money, you didn't need money to live, then really this is what it's all about. Unfortunately, you need money to live. So you have to strive for some success. Um, you know, unfortunate truths. Okay, pick an aesthetic. 
Rock sessions in a tiny apartment, cracked porcelain dolls, richly colored lipstick, living in the shadows, velvet dresses, love that becomes poisoned, vintage movies, statuettes of Virgin Mary. Oh, you got PJ Harvey? Oh, Lunar, I love that for you. Um, designer clothes, concerts, becoming a different person. Ooh, I love that. Uh, writing poetry at 3, 3 a.m., fine perfume, high-end makeup, slapping myself in richly scented rose moisturizer. I, I like the becoming a different person, but the rest of this is no. Um, black and white photography, purposefully garish makeup. A woman pulling a sword out of a stone, a clear crystal reflection of my own reflection in a stream, a rural cottage, fresh break bread, farm animals, the smell after it rains. Oh, I love this. Red hair, fairies, pianos, falling leaves, houseplants, lavender candles, playing in a bar to a tiny audience, a garden filled with flowers and herbs, the sun. Ooh. Oh, I love that. Hey, good evening, Moisty. How's it going? The Color Black, Doc Martens doing art exhibits, exhibitions, dreams that are colored by rainbows and bunny rabbits. The moon, heavy eyeliner, a single drop of blood. Oh, changed my mind. It's this one. It's this one. Okay, last one. Who'd I get? I got Kat, how do you say her last name? Jelland? Kat Jelland, I guess? Guess uh, Babes in Toyland. They're good. If you've never heard of Babes in Toyland, um, they are pretty fan fucking tastic. I assume if you're Gen Z, uh, it's probably, you know, old for you. Anyway, if anybody else wants to do it along with me and Lunar, there you go. Okay, you're a trailblazer, known for starting trends and being a bit big influence on others. You're fashionable, sweet voiced and pretty, and yet you're also quiet and mysterious. You're amazing at what you do. You love fashion, especially vintage fashion, and are deeply invested in your own personal style. All that's true. Nobody can deny that you're talented, but yet you're also somewhat dark. Beneath your angelic appearance is someone who is broody and troubled. Some of your most favorite songs include Bruise, Violet, Angel Hair, Handsome, Handsome and Gretel, Bluebell, Quiet Room, and Ariel. All right, let me read yours for uh, PJ Harvey Lunar. <clears throat> you had a quiet upbringing, but would later go on to great success. You strive for perfection and always work towards self-improvement. You value originality and make an effort to avoid falling in a rut. Many people have recommended your great beauty. You have reputation for being mystical and mysterious to the extent that some people think you must be a witch. You probably experienced a dramatic breakup. I love that for you, Lunar, because I feel like um, the vibe is probably the closest that you're going to get to like the Taylor Swift vibe from this. It looks like most people get cat the way that I did. Um, Courtney Love is also a possibility. Great singer. Tori Amos. Oh, love her. Jessica Adams. Oh, she's great. Jack off Jill. They're great. <clears throat> on, mo on mobile. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 for sure. Well, Moisty, lucky for you, we are switching over to Mist right now. Let's do it. Okay. Let me get logged in. Oh, why am I not? Am I not logged in? Oh, no, I am logged in. Okay, fabulous. All right. Where is... Why am I on all games? Was I messing... I must have been messing with this earlier. I don't remember. Anyway, there's Mist. Let's get our controller connected up. Here we go, guys. Oh, Kragus. Hey, Lunar's the witch. Lunar's the witch. I mean, it can be. I have, like, the tarot deck there if anybody wants to, you know, pull a tarot card for you kind of thing. We can do that. Yeah, I agree, Lunar. Taylor Swift and Wolfie vibes all for you. <clears throat> all right, guys. So a couple of things while we're watching the intro here. Um, I realized that when we were in the Stone Ship era, I missed showing you guys where the other half of the torn paper is. I know what it says, so it's okay. But just so that you know, uh, it was in Atris's bedroom. So it was in Atris's bedroom, and I missed it, uh, but it's there, it's in the Stone Ship Age, so sorry. Luckily I know what it says, so we don't have to go back. Um, if you remember last time, we were finished, we were in Channelwood, we didn't quite finish before 8.30, but today I am definitely going to be finishing Mist. So, um... <clears throat> Even if it takes a little bit past 8.30, we are going to definitely be finishing um, finishing up Mist. Pull a tarot card. Okay, Jane, do you want me to just pull something random for you, or do you have, like, a question you want me to ask? What 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 does your heart desire for your tarot card? All right. So here we go. All right. So I think we got to so we gotta go over this way. It, you know, and there was a drawer. There was a drawer I didn't open in the in that other bedroom. And um, so that was the problem there. I was in the right spot. I just neglected to open one of the drawers. All of these things I, I thought about when I went and rewatched my VOD. Um, and I was like, shoot, I missed two things for them. 
Uh, that's what I get for kind of like trying to play this mostly based off of memory. <laughs> let's see, is this the room? Oh no, shoot, I went to the wrong spot. Alright, let's go back. It was around the other way. We're gonna go to this other be the bedroom that we were in towards the end of the stream last time. And it's in the it's in the drawer that had like where like the ink vials and stuff were. I just didn't open that particular drawer. <laughs> so oops, oops, oops. And then we'll have both the pages. And we'll be able to I'll show you guys how we can leave Channelwood after that. Um, I live for Taylor on TikTok at the moment. Oh, Taylor uh, Taylor Swift has a TikTok. I banned myself from TikTok, kind of, sort of, because, like, I just... Oh, that's a cool glitch. Um, okay. Anyways, there's the red page. <laughs> uh, everything is glitched out. Oh. Oh, wow. Um, cool. <laughs> uh, I don't know what's up with you, uh, Cirrus, what you were doing in here, but it looks like you had a lot of fun, whatever it was. <laughs> How are the levels, by the way, guys? Can you hear me over the game? Um, is the game too loud? Am I too loud? I don't know. Um, I don't know. Cirrus had a bunch of fun in his room. That's, that's all I can fathom. <laughs> uh, don't really quite get it. He, uh, he somehow escaped the book and came and had fun in his Channelwood bedroom. <laughs> um, and one cool thing that uh, that I didn't that I need to point out also is when you the two ripped pages, right? There's the page that's ripped in half, and that was in Cirrus's bedroom just now. The other one in Stoneship Age, it's in Akinar's bedroom. So that's an interesting little kind of tidbit in kind of what's going on here. That ripped up page and the message that it says, uh, you know, Cirrus and Akinar were kind of, you know. Doing, doing something, 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 something together. I might want to turn the game down a tiny bit, though, in case loud noises happen. Okay, got it, Koneko. Thank you so much. I, I have highly, highly appreciate your tech support. Um, oh, you do have a tarot question. How will tomorrow's pursuit of friendship go? Okay, uh, once we're at a good point of switching worlds, Jane, I will pull that for you, and we will find out. Okay, so now... We gotta go back down here into this first switch and uh, make this go the other way. And there's another elevator down over here that we need to get to. But I think I need to make the water... Is it just that switch I need to flip? Is the water going the right way? Um, yeah, okay, the water's going the right way. I think, I think. We're about to find out. <clears throat> so I think we can go over here. Froggy! Hello, Froggy! Hop, 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 hop. Oh, bye. Bye, Froggy. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's this elevator over here. And then that will be the end of Channelwood. I love this age. Um, it has a lot of walking. It's one of the larger ages, but just the atmosphere of it is so, so cool to me. I really love it. Another froggy. Hi, froggy. Oh, bye, froggy. Okay, let's go into this elevator. Out of interest, do they still use the original water sound, or did they update those with the remaster? I feel like some of the sounds are the same, and some are updated. It kind of depends. Um, I'm not really sure. I'd have to go back and play the original to to be sure. I'm, I just don't. I don't know if I remember it well enough. Oh man, I didn't do it right. I didn't do the water right. Let's go back around. There is a one more switch. I think I need to flip. So I gotta make it go across that um, that pipe that we built last time. So yeah, some of the sounds definitely sound like the original to me, but some I'm not so sure. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell because I think this the, this version of it, like this particular remake, feels to me like how it felt when I first played Mist. 
you know, so long ago as a kid. And because of that, it's kind of like, it's kind of hard because when the way that you remember old games is so different than how they actually were, you know, <laughs> um, they don't really, they don't really do, uh, they don't really look like how you remember them looking like when you were a child. Okay, there we go. I had to switch, flip that one too. Now it's going to the right spot and we can use the elevator. Um, cause like your, your memory and your imagination just fills in all of this stuff you know, that wasn't there. And because this game is so true to the spirit of what I played as a child, it's sometimes difficult for me to look at it and really know if something's super different or not. Um, so I know it's super different if I notice it, but there are some things I'm sure that are quite different and I'm just not noticing it because the memories of how the original was are so hazy. It also doesn't help that I've played several of the other remakes, and they all are kind of smooshed together in my brain uh, in a very uh, kind of haphazard way. So it's hard for me to know which memories are from which versions of the game. You know what I mean? So that's that about that. Moisey, now that you've played this one, are you interested in um, going back and trying the original so you can see like what was considered peak amazing gaming in the 90s? Have you ever played What Remains of Edith Finch? No, I have not. I have not played that. Okay. Here we go. Up this elevator. And here's our missed linking book. We can go back. Okay, and while that's going, I'm going to go get the tarot card so we can pull one for... Um... Oh, that's who I got too, Kay. That's who I got too. Um, she's good. She's awesome. Alright, so while that's going back, we're going to go get the tarot deck for Jane. Heard of that one. My brother keeps telling me to play it. Oh, okay. Is that two endorsements? Second is Courtney Love, though, and I'm concerned. <laughs> uh, Courtney Love's awesome. Don't be concerned. Don't be concerned. All right. Okay, so that was Channelwood. Now we need to go put our pages in our books. Let's see what, um, let's see what, see what Sirius and Akinar have to say. Now that we've got them another page. Oh shit. Okay, so um, more serious accusations there. Uh, let's see what, uh, that was what Akinar had to say. Let's see what Cirrus has to say about this whole situation. Yeah, she's cool. She's cool. Um, you should look into her. Yeah, she called it Harvey Weinstein before it was, before it was cool. 
Um, I'd like to have the reading for next week. How will my vacation with my partner go? Okay, we will ask that next, Koneko. I screwed up the deck, so I'm sorry. I have to reorganize it. And um, I, some of the cards are upside down. Anyway, um, I'll do that while we watch uh, what Akinar has to say. Okay, so who do, what do y'all think? Do we trust Cirrus or do we trust Akinar? Um, I don't know. They seem to be really accusing each other. So it seems unclear to me. All right. So Jane, for your reading, you got Knight of Cups. So I'm just pulling up my description for that. And, um, and Koneko, we'll do, we'll do yours in another good kind of break point. All right. So Jane's question was, is there a third choice? <laughs> no spoilers, guys, if you know the answer to her question. Um, no spoilers. Okay, how will tomorrow's pursuit of friendship go? That was your question. Okay. It's um, right side up, Knight of Cups. So this is what you got here. Yeah, I think it's going to go really well. So the Knight of Cups is uh, a very soulful and loving card. It sometimes represents someone youthful, such as college age. Um, and uh, and it can be romantic or emotionally profound. So I think that means um, very, very, very good. Very, very good for you, Jane. Uh, your friendship adventures tomorrow are going to be amazing. I missed too much of the previous stream to judge, but I personally think we shouldn't, shouldn't trust either. <laughs> Well, we will find out. We'll find out. Okay, so next we're going to tackle the mechanical age. So let's go back here and we are going to rotate our tower over to this gear right here. Okay. Y'all remember how this works. So we have to do the little lever so we can get behind the bookshelf. And we're going to go get our clue. We're going to get our clue for the mechanical age. And we always have to close the door for safety. <laughs> you found your goat noise. Oh my gosh, Moisty. <laughs> I hope you like it. I had to. Li I listened to a lot of goat noises to pick one that I thought um, per was particularly good. I didn't want you to get any kind of lame goat noise, you know. I did. I did. We have to. I mean, we have the wolf howl for Lunar, so we have the goat noise for you. I want to go up. Why won't it let me? There we go. And since it won't let, it, let me add any more channel point ones, it'll only let me add more. So here we go. There's the mechanical guy. Um, it'll only let me add more uh, bits ones. 
we'll leave it at, at zero bits for a while and eventually I'll I'll make it like worth bits or something like all the other bits ones but we can have it um on for free for a little while why why don't you go down go down to hold there we go all right so that's for mechanical a just for the little gear right there and our key is 240 and 221 so if we remember from before we have to write everything down in this game so we're gonna write down 240 and then two two one now we saw a clock before so we've got a time here I bet this has something to do with that are you whistling at the note-taking <laughs> Oh, Jane, you cracked me up. Okay, let's get back in our elevator. Let's go down. Stream go down to hole. One of the most beautiful things about this game is that when the, the brothers that created it, when they were designing this game, they weren't really designing a game. What they were really building is worlds, and the game was just the vehicle to share that world with others. Um, and I love that, because that's kind of how I do everything. <laughs> and so I always love it when I see someone that can make success with that sort of thing. All right, so mechanical. Let's see what the book has to say about the mechanical age so we can learn a little bit about it before we go. All right. Before arriving in this age, I was determined that it would be a journey to a world very different from my previous adventures, and it was. The sky here is dark and gray and incessantly displays flashes of lightning in the distance. I met a very old man with a long beard and hair that hangs to his waist. He is very feeble and has trouble even moving. This man has obviously been through very many things in this strange world, and I have learned many things from him. He has told me an interesting story of this world's history. Years ago, he told me, there was a beautiful city that rose up out of the water. It housed many people inside its walls, and the people had everything they wished for. The city was surrounded by three high hills, which rose higher than the city. On the east hill of the city rested a large lookout post. The people of the city had constructed the post, expecting visitors to arrive from the east. The people had no means of traveling on the water, which forced them to merely wait for friend or foe. As time passed, friendly visitors brought rumors of an enemy that existed beyond the horizon. The people grew fearful, yet nothing happened. One day, the unusually sunny sky became as dark as night and black ships appeared on the horizon. The lookout posts attempt at peace were turned away and the sentries there were easily overwhelmed. The ships continued to wreak havoc on the city, apparently destroying everyone and everything. After the foundations of the city were destroyed, the city sunk deep into the ocean, and only the lookout post remained. The black ships sailed away. The man continued to say that eight people had hidden and managed to survive through the attack. In the nine years since the attack, two of the survivors had died. He also said that it was rumored that ten years from the attack, the enemy would return to finish the destruction they had started so long ago. I have decided, since hearing the man's story, it would be admirable to save the civilization and stop the enemy's plan of destruction. I'm excited about the adventure that awaits me, and an idea has sparked in my mind to provoke the needed defense for these people. I met the remaining survivors today and have begun work on a plan for protection. After a short absence, I have returned to this age with my two sons. They have, as of yet, traveled rarely. Oh, thank you for that howl, Lunar. Um, they have, as of yet, traveled rarely with me, and they are understandably excited to be here. They have grown considerably since Everdunes, and it is already obvious to me that they will be a great help this time. Instead of the nuisance they have been in the past, all three of us, along with four of the healthier survivors, began construction today. We are building upon the old city's ruins, which will provide a perfect foundation for our fortress. My sons have been spending much of their spare time on the South Island, where most of my materials are stored. I'm very pleased with their intelligence and their creativity is refreshing to see as they work on some small projects of their own. It has been over four months now and the construction is going well. 
My sons love the world except for its gray sky. They detest the gray sky and tell me many times they wish the sky here were the blue sky in mist. The old man I first talked to tells me that the enemy is due in four months. I feel we will be ready when the time comes. The man reminds me of Emmett in ways, and I often wonder how Emmett and his people are doing. It has been six months of work, and we finally finished the fortress. It rests between the three hills, which are now only islands due to the rising water level that people have experienced after the attack. Inside the fortress, I have designed the most intriguing device. It makes use of a technology called holography. I began experimenting with my own visits to Aspamir, and it will be it will be working in a couple of days after I compensate for some small miscalculations. This holographic device will enable survivors to learn to use the fortress. The enemy is due to come soon, and I trust the fortress will provide sufficient protection for all of us. And here's a little bit of what it looks like. The black ships have come and their attack was sustained. Their weapons have been stopped and it appears they have turned away in defeat. I could not help but smile as I watched the boats leave. Last night we had a small celebration and the old survivors danced their dances of old. My sons did not understand why the sky had not turned back to its original blue. The old man told them that the storms would never end until the enemy was destroyed. I assured my sons that the blue sky was not worth the risk of death, that they seemed to hear me. I have had a healthy adventure and have begun work on a new book. Once again, I must leave a familiar age in search of a new universe I have begun. But first, I will have an extended time with Catherine, whom I miss very much. I must also return to the people of the Tide. I believe in my travels I have found a substance that will ease the pain of their bone ailments that they have long endured. I hope to return to the Mechanical Age one day to find the population growing with my fortress still strong, though the sky may always be black. I am confident the people here feel a heavier darkness has been lifted from their shoulders. Catherine is just hanging out the whole time. Yeah, Catherine doesn't go adventuring with them. <laughs> oh, did you see the kitties? Oh, Oreo, quit that. I'm so sorry. Anyways, he was being gross up. Next month, next month they can get spayed. Just a few more weeks. Oh, y'all chatted so much. Okay. It would be a mile to save the civilization. So sus. Well, Jane, if what you, what you might want, what you can gather from the book is that um, Atris, he created it. So that's how this world works. There are people like Atris and Atris's sons who can write in books, and then those books become worlds. And so all of these different ages here that we're traveling to are worlds that Atris created. All right. So it's the time was 240. So this needs to go to 40. All right, so that, is that right? No, one more. Oh, look, there we go. Come on. There we go. And this needs to go to two. It should be right. It looks like 240, right? I'm not very good at telling time with these kinds of clocks. There we go. Here's the bad water effects again. <laughs> The, one of the things that I'm like, ooh, why does it look like that? Everything else is so gorgeous. But yes, Catherine just hangs out um, at home, basically, while uh, Atris and his sons go off and have adventures. And here's that final switch that we couldn't flip before. Let's flip it. Because remember, you have to flip all the switches and press all the buttons. Let's push this button. Oh, what's this? Okay, so here's some numbers. And remember, the other key that we had was 224. So let's see how this works. Oh, okay. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, so we have to... Oh, it was 221, not 224. Okay, there we go, two, two, one. Now let's pull this lever. Oh, that resets it. Okay, so I think we just, we just pull these two levers. Okay, got that to say one. Oh, 
shoot. There we go. Now one more. One more pull. Okay. Two, two, one. Okay. So it makes the gear go like this. Yes! <laughs> so it makes the gear go like this, and now where else on the island is there a gear like that? Just like how we rose that little model ship, and there was a ship somewhere else on the island. So remember, there's a gear somewhere else on the island. So let's go to that. Button, I like how you say that. Button, what did I mean to what did I say? I don't know what word you're trying to say, Jane, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so let's go up here. Whoa, the gear up here is open. Amazing. Oh, button. Oh, button, button. I don't know. I'd probably say it kind of Southern or something. Look at this. Wow. Mechanical age, let's go. So yeah, each one of these ages that we're going to is a world. It's a world that Atris created. Karen, you're too intelligent. I stumbled through this with sheer willpower. Power. Moisty, I have played this game like a dozen times. I'm not intelligent. I'm just, don't give up. <laughs> this isn't a blind playthrough. It's totally different. Okay. All right. So here we are. Mechanical age. Okay. What's this? Ooh, some buttons. Okay. Let's go up here. Oh, can't quite walk over there. Persistence is powerful. That's right. And look at these. These hexagonal rocks. I feel like that's a thing in parts of the country. Um, I can't remember what they're called, what they're made of, but like, that's really a thing that's, that's real. Uh, very cool. All right, let's go inside here. All right, let's go, let's choose right first, and then well, I guess we'll go left afterwards. Oh, what is this? Rotation station, a rotation simulation. Is it not? There we go. Oh. You'll hear that? Cowbell. Oh, I can't remember how you're supposed to do this. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to get it to play the other sounds. I know it's possible. I just don't remember what I'm supposed to do. Well, I know what all the sounds are. <laughs> but I don't remember how to make this play them. I can only push this one up. Okay. Can this one go down? Well, whatever. It's fine. Anyway, you can play with that to try to figure out the puzzle. But, uh, this is a creepy kind of throne thing. But uh, I just don't remember how you're supposed to do the controls for that. Whoa! Snick! The snick got me! Alright. Let's push this button. This is a button, right? Yes. Whoa! Weird room, but it is a blue page. Okay. This looks like a torture chamber. It's where they put the prisoners. I guess this is where they were going to put the people with the black sails if they ever caught one of them. What's in here? Oh, a shrunken head. That's lovely. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Push the button. All right. 
Let's keep going. Let's go around to the other side. Oh, this is a much nicer little throne room. We've got a little chest set. Oh, and here's a button. Okay. Thank you, Craig. What does this go to? Oh, another secret room. What's in here? What's this? Cirrus, your creed sickens me. Your desire for wealth and plunder is never satisfied. I will instruct my subjects not to pay your new tax, and you know they'll listen to me. Regards, Akinar. Oh, boy. <sighs> Thank you for the hydrate, Craigus. Some gold. And here's a red page. Okay. So we got the pages pretty quickly in this age. What else is in this room? See, we've got a little ship and a model of that rocket ship, too. Got a lady. Got some gems. What's this? Okay, Kay, I will make you VIP. Wait, why are you multiple VIP? You can't be VIP twice. Kay, what are you doing? Oh, this is the clock from before. <laughs> VIP squared. Kay, I can't make you VIP that many times. Just wasting points. Oh, okay. That's fine then. I thought I could look through the telescope. I'm pretty sure I can. Do I have to do it from the other end? Is it flipped around the wrong way? No? Well, I was gonna try to shale the skeleton, but I cannot remember how to make the telescope go. This isn't one of the puzzles, it's just like a fun thing that you can do. Anyways. Wow, look at that painting. Pretty ominous, right? Should have made a command. Yeah, we should have we should have had the exclamation K command. I don't know what I'd what I'd do. I'm only so creative. Jane can help you. She's great at making commands. All right, let's go back around here. Okay, so we can go straight across. And what's this? Doesn't seem to do anything. Hmm. Let's go over here. There's this button. I'm daddy in like two or three other chats. Well, you can be daddy here too, okay? Live your dreams. Whatever you want to be. All right. Let's go down here, see if we can get some power to this thing. What's this? Oh, it blinks. I bet that did something. Let's go find out. You'll, I'll save up again. Well, Kay, you used like, you used four VIPs. Only one of them can I do something with. So you've definitely spent enough for, um, for a uh, command. You don't have to like save up again. Don't refund though. Okay, okay. Whatever you say, girl, whatever you say. <laughs> All right. Okay, so that doesn't do anything. Does down do anything? No. What about up? Well, we don't have to close the door on this elevator. It does it for us. I guess they got smart with that when they were making the fortress here in this age. <laughs> All right. Hmm. What's this? Excuse me, this is the part that confused me the most in this game. Oh, I see. Let's see. I'm trying to remember what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, this is it. You push that button, and then you run back out. Whoa, what's this? Controls. So these controls are basically the same as what um i was doing on that uh little 
dealy thing, but I couldn't remember how to get it to work. So hopefully I can remember how to get it, what I'm supposed, buttons I'm supposed to push to make this work. Okay, so cowbell. I'm doing something wrong because it's not, it's not rotating. Haha, <laughs> I remember what I'm supposed to do. Okay, so we've got cowbell and exhaust. So cowbell was that was the default back at the beginning. We've also got exhaust. Let's see what that is. Uh, how do I get back down? Oh, I have to push this button, that's right. This part confused me the most in the game, I think. Really? It's hard, it's kind of hard, like you really just have to kind of play with the buttons to figure it out. Um, I don't know how else you would figure out that you gotta push that middle button and then run out of the, of the elevator. Okay, so we rotated it around. And we got the exhaust sound. Let's go back out and see what we have rotated around too. Because we rotated the whole thing, like this is a whole rotating fortress. So let's go see. Okay, so now we're rotated around to a different little island than we were a moment ago. So the cowbell is the one we came in on, and now we're at exhaust. So you can see over there, off in the distance, that's the cowbell sound that we came in on, and this is exhaust. Okay, so we've got two little symbols here, so that's interesting. So we've got this like a sun over some mountains, and then this looks like a half of a pizza. All right. Oh yeah, like look at this. See how blue the sky is here? There's no black sky right now. Too bad Sirius and Akinar are trapped in books so they can't see it. Oh well. All right, let's do another rotation and see what else we can find. If you guys are enjoying kind of the story of this game about, you know, Atris and Catherine and the two brothers and how they can like write books to create worlds, that is, it. there is a book series of Myst as well. That um, you know, you don't have to solve puzzles or anything. You can just you can just read them, um, and they're pretty good. Like they're really not that bad. Thank you so much for coming on, Craig. Happy to have you here. I know you're over in the UK, so I'm always uh, very pleasantly surprised when any of my uh, across the pond friends show up for my Thursday streams. I know it's very late for you guys. I would never. <laughs> I would never stay up so late for a stream. I would just put it on lurk. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's a book series. There's totally a book series, and you absolutely do need it in your life. Okay, so here we go. So this needs to go up, and then this will rotate. Yeah, they're pretty good. I read them um, when they came out. Okay, so now we've got a clink sound. Okay, so clink. And let's go, let's go back out. It's currently 120 here in the Netherlands and I regret nothing. Well, I appreciate that, Koneko. I'm so glad it's not causing regrets. I don't know, I just really love my sleep. <laughs> and um, although I love being at streams live, uh, I'm not afraid to like watch them later, which I will do a lot of times for my favorite streamers. I will go watch them later, watch the VODs later, like in the background or whatever. Yes, Kitty. Um, Kitty, uh, you need to go watch yesterday's stream so you can see this from the beginning. We're a little over halfway through the game now, at this point. Uh, but we played it last week too, and I'm gonna finish it this week. We may go a little bit past it, the 8.30 time. We'll see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish it this stream though, because I want to get back to Final Fantasy 
excuse me, 10 next week. I slept a whole nine hours last night. I was so proud. I still woke up tired though. Wow. I'm proud of you, Kay. I love sleep, but um, it's very hard. It's hard to get a solid nine hours. If I sleep nine hours, it's usually because I was woken up a lot during the night. All right, so we've got some more symbols. We've got like a little half circle -y looking thing, and then we've got a triangle, line, triangle. Okay. So we wrote that down too. So here is what I've got so far from Mechanical Age. You can see I've got the sounds, and then I've got our little symbols right here. All right, let's go back in. So there's one more rotation, although you can see there's no island over there. There's no island over there, but there's another direction we can go. There's, there's four directions, right? North, south, east, and west. So we'll go see about that and see what that looks, what sound that is, and then we'll rotate back around to the cowbell. I don't know why I was real tired last night. And then I took some Benadryl for bug bites and apparently got knocked me the fuck out. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. I'm really susceptible to bug bites too. I absolutely hate them. Um, really itchy and I have to take Benadryl when I get too many bug bites as well. Oh, one thing that happened while we were uh, away in Gatlinburg that I can show you guys. I got really bad sunburned. Look at that. Look at that shit. It actually hurt kind of a lot yesterday. Um, it was hard to sleep on. It doesn't hurt so bad today. It just is making me sweat a lot. It's really warm. I ain't gonna lie, there's not many streams I stay up for as it is. Basically means I'm sacrificing a non-tired work day. Oh, thank you so much, Moisty. I really appreciate it. Don't ever sacrifice work for me, though. You need to you need to work so that you can make money and live. Um, I really love the endless sea landscape. Oh, yes, 100%. It's beautiful. Okay, so we've got a spin sound as our last one. All right, so we've got cowbell, exhaust, clink, and spin. And then we already saw that there was no island over there, so we're not going to bother walking back out. We're just going to rotate this again. Go back up. Okay. Oh, I have been. I have been. I've got some... Okay, so we're back around to the cowbell. Yeah, I have some um, various kinds of lotion and some that's specifically aloe. Uh, don't worry. Don't worry, Lunar. I got it. I am very pale, as y'all saw when we had me and Landon together in real life. And uh, and you could kind of see the comparison. <laughs> um, I am I'm ghostly, to say the least. Um, I got that alabaster skin. And uh, so I sunburn very, very easily. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. I got this I got this within a, a hot 30 minutes. It only took about 30 minutes of sitting outside. Uh, did you guys know it rains like a whole lot in the Smokies? It rains enough where in the higher elevations, it's considered a rainforest. So we got rain most of the days that we were there. But on the last day for a while in the afternoon, uh, we got some nice sunshine, so we went and sat outside, and I got burnt up. <laughs> I got ye old Irish and German paleness. Yes, uh, my dad's side is basically all of British descent. Uh, my mom's side, though, is quite swarthy. Uh, Spanish and, and uh, Creole and some areas like that, but um, I got none of that. I got my coloring all from my father's side, so <laughs> I, got, I got the Brit coloring. Okay. Uh, so our first symbol was that guy. Our next symbol was, uh, where's the three? Not that three. This three. And then the next symbol is this. And then our have a pizza. Okay, let's push the button. Whoa, stairs go down. The descriptions for these noises are very odd. Yes. Okay, so that's it. The mechanical age is pretty quick. Let's go back. Back to mist. I've never tanned in my life. Yeah, I don't tan either, Kay. I don't tan either. All right, we had another tarot question from Koneko. Let me scroll back up so I can find your question. I'd like to have a reading for next week. How will my first vacation with my partner go? Okay, I'll have that answer for you. I'll do the shuffling and stuff once we when we get to the Cirrus and Akinar cutscenes. And I'll, I'll tell you after those cutscenes. All right, got another page for Akinar. Let's see what he has to say. Oh, my friend. You for bringing the blue pages. 
You're welcome, Akinar. Okay. All right, let's go see what Cirrus has to say. Are we trusting Akinar a bit more at this point, or are we trusting Cirrus a bit more? I don't know. All right, let's put the red page in. All right, Cirrus, what's up? All right. So Cirrus says Akinar destroyed the books and murdered their father, or tried to murder murder their father. And then Akinar saying the other way around. So they both say the other one did all of it, did all the murdering, did all the book burning, all of. Oh, Luna, I hope you have a good dinner. When you get back, tell me what you had, if you had something tasty. Okay, so that's the mechanical age. So, pretty short one. All right, there is one more age that we need to do, and this is the selenitic age. So let's do, let's do some more tower rotation. Oh, let's go the other way. All right, the selenitic age is this one right here. And you can see now that we flipped that final switch, you can see the clock tower shows up on this little map thing too. All right, so here we go. Same as before. Oh, come on, pull the lever. There we go. We gotta go get our key for the selenitic age. And we're gonna finally get to go in the rocket ship. I remember when I was playing this game as a kid, 
the first thing I wanted to do was get inside that dang rocket ship and see what it did. <laughs> it was just so fascinating to me. And you'll hear that uh, when people talk about this game, the rocket ship is kind of seen as out of place. It was just, you know, something random that they were inspired by at the time. But to me, it was like so fascinating. I guess because it looks so different. Okay, so 59 volts. All right. And I'll show you guys where this is pointing. So remember, if we go up here, we can see where the book is. All right, so the book for this age is there inside the rocket ship. But we have to first find somewhere we can put 59 volts in. So let's go back down and let's check that out. All right, Kay, no worries, no worries. Okay, so um, Koneko, if you're still here, before we go and read the book for the Selenitic Age, I will tell you what the tarot pulled for you. So I got Hanged Man, so I pulled Hangman, and uh, that is really good for a trip. So it means a couple of things. One, I can tell from pulling this that you are a little bit nervous, which tracks with you asking um, about it. And in addition to that, though, this means you should absolutely take a leap of faith. So the hangman is all about putting yourself out there for future change. So I think what that means is that ultimately this trip is either going to be good for you or good for your relationship, or you're going to have some kind of um, really important experience there. Uh, but at the very least, you're going to have uh, a, a good for you trip, a, a trip that is good for your soul, if that makes sense. So that's what I got for you uh, for the, the, the first vacation with your partner. All right, the Selenitic Age. Let's read about it. Let's see what's going on here. Okay. It's been a while since I have heard only silence and I enjoy it greatly. I think for some reason, I do not feel altogether welcome in this new world in which I've arrived. But how could I be unwelcome in an age with no inhabitants? It is, of course, only in my head. This world is very beautiful, but I think I have yet to ever write in a journal that an age I have linked to is a horrid or disgusting. From the grassy hill where I'm standing, I can see green fields following along with a few scattered forests. A rather large lake looms some distance from where I'm standing, yet the water's blue can be seen plainly from here. The air is fresh and the sky is sparkled with white clouds. It is absolutely breathtaking, and yet that strange feeling again. Perhaps it is the hot breeze that continues to blow from the north, hotter than I would have imagined. It almost singes my skin, and I feel quite uncomfortable when it comes. I will try to ignore it. Night is almost arrived and the sunset is spectacular. Oranges and reds have settled above the western horizon. Though night has come, the horizon still glows red long past sunset. Dark reds flow from the horizon and blend into the black sky. Again, the feeling, and I am beginning to believe it's not all in my mind. I must sleep now. I will need my strength to explore more tomorrow. I've had to return home due to an unpredictable natural occurrence more frightening than I've ever experienced. I was awakened by terrible shaking in the ground and explosions on all sides of me. Gigantic balls of fire were falling from the sky, and I immediately left in fear of my life. I must remember to bring a missed linking book with me when I return in case the one left there has been destroyed or damaged. I have returned to a different world than the one I left only three months ago. It's been transformed into a barren desert land with only gigantic craters scattered across the land to provide variety. Strangely enough, the small grassy hill where I spent my first night remains exactly the way I found it. Apparently, the falling meteors did not hit this area, leaving an oasis in the midst of this horrible desolation. The hot wind, I remember, has turned into a rather pleasant breeze, which is at least one improvement. I fear it's the only improvement. The magnificent lake I saw on my first visit is now completely dried up. However, another lake now exists and appears to be quite a bit larger. I assume one of the falling meteors created this lake due to its circular shape and the jutting rock that grows out of the center of the lake. The rest of the world seems like desert, though I've, although I will verify that statement with closer inspection. 
Though this world has little visual excitement to offer, it offers much to the ears. Sounds constantly thro flow through my ears, and I have found where few of them originate. It seems, as Catherine says, I do find beauty in everything. Last night I was awakened by a horrible hissing. I was sweating, and the heat was so intense that I immediately dipped my head in a nearby stream to cool it down. The hot breezes had returned, along with a low roar from the ground. I walked a short distance to observe some red flame shooting up from the earth. Suddenly, the ground began to crack and a huge chasm opened. The chasm continued to grow until it was far too wide to cross. Then, the tumult subsided, leaving only a dull roar. I have decided, however, I can use the chasm to my advantage. Perhaps the heat from the chasm can be harnessed. Even as the chasm has ripped into the surface of this world, it has opened up a whole new world to explore. Although uncomfortably hot, I found it possible to reach a cave in the chasm that's been created, and have now explored deep into the crust of this planet. I have found a vast underground cave system that will take many years to map and explore. I will also look for a safer way to reach the underground than through the chasm wall. This age seems to change on its own, so I feel I should leave again and see if things are different when I return. It's also important that I check on Cirrus and Akinar and make sure everything's going along well. When I return, I will also hope to bring back some tools I will need for my plans to explore the underground. The abundance of raw material here is beginning to amaze me. I've returned with some of the complex tools I knew I would be needing. I assumed I would have to return for more basic materials. However, it seems as though I will be able to find everything I need here. Of course, iron is abundant, but I've also found titanium occurring naturally, and I'm all the more excited to begin work. Everything is set, and I look forward to tomorrow. My raw materials are all here. I think I'll be able to have most of my additions to this age completed within one year. I so love working with my hands, whether writing or building. And then it sort of faded out. You kind of can't really see what he says. So three meters is not enough support for the beams, although there's a little dial there. Amazingly strong. Oh, and there's the rocket. Prized inventions. Could have never imagined it come together quite... I don't... I doubt... Could possibly work with 14 instead of 8. Completely fatigued. I'm so... I'm leaving today in order to bring Cirrus and Akinar. I've left them alone in Channelwood. I believe they will enjoy all that is here to see. The age seems to have stabilized. I believe the meteor set off a period of volcanic activity by piercing into the shallow crust. But the tremors have become few. I have just noticed that a large amount of this journal has curiously vanished from the very pages on which I wrote over the last 18 months. Fortunately, I've copied many of my construction notes in another journal. I do not understand the many mysteries of this world, but I trust I will discover logical answers to my questions. I have a feeling that many of my questions can be answered in another age to which I hope to travel soon. But for now, I must simply accept this world's mysteries and take pride in my accomplishments. Okay, and then we've got a little keyboard here, so let's take a picture of that. Okay. Um, this checks out before vacation together without parents, so we're both nervous and very excited. Oh, I'm so excited for you, Kaneko. That's awesome. Okay, and we've got a little diagram of the island, and that's it. That's the end of this book. Okay, without further ado, let's go. So the first clue is 59 volts. So that's interesting. So if you go to the rocket ship, what's going to happen is it's not going to open. So we have to find the 59 volts clue first. So let's go in this building. This is one we haven't been in yet. Let's go down here. So remember there's tunnels. This age is, a, is something to do with tunnels. So this seems promising since it's going down, down, down. Okay, we can come in here. Oh, this looks like some power, doesn't it? Okay, so we've got this diagram over here. Power and power to ship. The ship, okay, and you can see these go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, so we've got a similar setup over here. All right, remember 59 is the answer, so let's start pressing some buttons. Okay, so that gives you 10, 1, this brings it up to 18, 20, okay, so this is the 1, 2, 3, oh, 42, 
50. So then this one should take us to 59. And there we go. All right. So let's back out. I can hear it. Now, in this puzzle, if you give it too much power, you will trip it and it'll all reset. So I will show you if that happens to you, what you need to do is come out here and you can climb so you can hear the power coming. So you can climb up this one with the ladder right there and reset it if that happens to you. But I knew how to do 59 exactly, so. <laughs> so here we go. And now we can go in the rocket. Oh, okay. Piano. Okay. So we got that keyboard before. So let's see. The combination was, let's see, this would be one, this one. Okay, so that's C1. Now, if you don't have these little, these audio guides turned on, you have to do it just based on what you hear, which is very difficult. So this puzzle can be quite hard for a lot of people if you don't have a very strong ear or you don't turn on the guide for um, the hard of hearing stuff. Okay, so that's C2. And the third one is this key, D sharp two. And then four is back here. F1. And then five is this guy over here. A sharp zero. Why all of these are sharp instead of using like sharps and flats, I don't really know. It's kind of strange. Um, all right, let's close the door. Safety first, we always have to close the door. Okay. Oh, these make sounds too. So let's make this go up to C1. Oh. I'll just use the D-pad, it's easier. There's C1, this is C2. And then this is D sharp two. The next one is F1. All sharps are stylistic things. Some composers prefer all sharps, all flats, rather. I know, but I like to see a mix, because that's how I learned. <laughs> uh, oh, I passed it. It's F1. But it's all... It's all, um... It's all sharps on this one, for whatever reason. Okay, A sharp, zero. There we go. That should be right. Whoa! Selenitic Age. Look at this. Very cool. Okay, let's go. Yeah, some notes only a sharper flat and the others I get confused. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, wait. What's a B sharp? Okay, let's go. I cannot for life figure out how to play D sharp, but I know exactly how to play an E flat, right? Exactly. I know what you mean. Okay, let's exit. Let's exit the ship. Right, Dipsky time for me. Good night. Thank you so much for joining me, Moisty. I will see you later. All right, so we're going to go through here. Wow, it's so misty here. It's so misty. Okay, so here's the first thing that we see. What's this guy? Oh, wind? Oh, wind? Okay, so they're all wind. Alright. Oh, 
Oh, we can, but we can change it. Okay, okay. All right. Let's explore. We'll go up here first. Here's that grassy knoll he was talking about. This was unburdened by the, uh, by the meteors. They didn't strike here. Okay. Oh, we've got water running. Okay. Oh, and here's a blue page. All right, so we've got water. You can see there's like a speaker right there from the water. Okay, let's go back down. See what else we can find here. This this um, place is all about the sounds. So, you know, apparently it's not much to look at, but I disagree. I think it's be visually beautiful too, but it's, it's very misty. So you can't really see it in the way that you see the other ages. It's all about what you hear in this one. All right, let's go around to this. Oh, what's this one? What's that? Whoa, there's lava. It is very hot right here. Okay, and this is lava, lava sound. We're writing these all down. And there were five buttons up there, so I bet there's gonna be five sounds to find. Let's see what this one is. Oh, we've got a broken clock. We've got a broken clock sound. Write that down. Oh, I forgot I should be pushing these buttons. Oh, let's go back and push the other two. I wrote down the sound and forgot to push the button. I forgot one of the rules of, of mist, guys. You have to push the button anytime you see the button. Here we go. Okay. The lava. And then it lights up the little icon. Okay, let's go back and push the water button. And the soundscape here is just so gorgeous. Do you see these like little fall trees? Like a little, a little oasis. And remember this, this uh, age had no people in it. So Akinar built all of this stuff by himself. And he didn't even write in his journal about having a chance to bring, I mean, not Akinar, um, Atris built all of this stuff, and he didn't even have a chance to write in his diary about bringing Cirrus and Akinar here, so we have to kind of assume that he didn't. So Atris built all of this um, himself. He is, a, he is quite the crafty man. He can do anything. He can do anything that he wants. Okay, let's keep going. What are these crystals? I think I hear another sound over here. Oh, yes, I do. Okay, let's go over here. Oh, and here's a red page. Ethereal crystal sound. Okay. So, clock and then crystal. Good night, Jane. Or are you saying night to Moisty? Okay. Let's go keep going around. Should have one more sound to find. What's up here? This is wind sound. Okay, let's write that down. Wind. And let's go to this next spot. Let's go down this tunnel. Remember he wrote about tunnels. Hmm. 
light. Now we can see. Uh oh, lady's meowing at me. I can hear her. Okay, what's at the other end of the tunnel? Oh, this is for the middle island. Okay, so this is the lake that the crater made, I guess. And this is the rock in the middle of it. What's in here? Haha! -ha! Okay. It's the things. Okay, so here we go. We're looking for the water sound. That's the clock over there. The water should be this way. So that's the lava. The water more to the right? I think I just missed it. Oh. There we go. Alright, next we need the lava. Let's turn him around. We have to listen for it. That's the crystals. the lava sound. Okay, let's find the clock. Be back this way from the bridge. Oh, went a little past it. There we go. Okay. crystal sound, and here's the wind. Where is the wind sound? See, that's the clock, the crystals, the wind should be around over here, I think? There we go. Okay, so now we've got all of them lined up. Let's push the middle button. All right, so I think it's probably the order. So I think the order I saw was crystal, water, Wind, lava, clock. Let's play it one more time, make sure that's what happened. Yep, crystal, water, wind, lava, and clock. Okay, so we've got our five sounds and we've got the order of those sounds. Let's go back down. Alright, and that light does not last long because it... Oh no, it's still light in here. It's still light. We're just going to leave the lights on. <laughs> I'm just kidding, we're going to be polite. Let's turn the lights off. Don't want to waste Atris's electricity. No reason to do that. Alright, so let's go back around to those five buttons we found at the beginning and see if we put these sounds in that order, what might happen? You can hear the footsteps very well, the footstep sound effects very well in this world. All right, here we go with this guy. So the first sound is wind. 
Okay, we need the first sound to be crystal. There's a whole bunch of sounds here that are not really present. Oh, train board. Oh, zaps. There's the crystal. Okay. This next one needs to be water. There we go. This next one needs to be wind. Okay, it already is. Then we're going to do lava. Come on, give me lava. Loopy sound. Am I just turning? There we go. There's lava. Like, am I just turning it too much? It's not working. Okay. Um, and then this needs to be the clock. Oh, there's a broken clock. Okay. And now the door opens and we can go inside. Okay, so here's more tunnels. More tunnels underneath. So there really isn't as much on the surface of this particular world. It's really more about what's under here. And a lot of the sounds are underneath type of sounds too, like the water and the lava and the crystal. Only the broken clock and the wind sounds are really the surface. All right, let's push this button. Oh my gosh, there we go. Wow, what's all this? Oh my gosh. It's a little vessel. Okay. Let's go inside of it. Welcome back, Lunar. What did you have for dinner? Was it good? Okay, here we go. So we've got a button here. Doesn't seem to do anything right now. Oh! <gasps> we are going down. Down the hole. Down into the interior of the planet. Wow. Baked chicken with a nice big salad. Oh, that's kind of what we had. We had smoked chicken and rice with a lemon herb sauce. And, uh, um, and a salad with little bagel chips on top. It was really good. All right, time for me to sleep. Bye. Thank you so much for joining me, Koneko. Okay, clink sound. Now, remember, I wrote down at, in uh, the mechanical age, cowbell exhaust clink and spin sounds. And also remember that Atrus wrote in his journal that this age was somehow connected to one of the other ages. The Selenic age here is connected to one of the other ages. So the other place we heard that clink sound was mechanical. And the clink sound played for north. So let's go north. Now you can solve the puzzle the way that I'm showing you here with the sounds. That's the way you're supposed to do it. Or... <laughs> You can do things the old-fashioned way and draw yourself a map. That is what I did when I was a child, and we did not figure out that these ages were connected. Um, so, there's no shame in that. But, uh, oh, we have the spin sound, so we need to go west. I pushed it the wrong way. Okay, so remember the spin in the mechanical age was to the west. So, let's go west next. Okay, that was the clink sound again, so we need to go back north next. We spent hours upon hours upon hours drawing a map, doing all of that stuff, 
<laughs> to try to win this puzzle. It was ridiculous. Oh, wrong way. East. We gotta go east for the spin sound. And I think that's pretty common. I think a lot of people would say they solve this puzzle by drawing a map. <laughs> Not by using the sounds, as intended. Okay, we've got exhaust again, so we're going to go east again. Okay, now we've got the cowbell sound. So the cowbell sound is south. Cowbell, okay. So south again. And that's what's beautiful about Mist. You can solve everything that you need to solve in this game just with observation. That's all it takes. Oh, that's east. I want to go west. Because we just got the spin sound. And I would say out of everything in these games, going through here and trying to do this puzzle took me the longest when we originally played, me and my dad when I was a kid, um, way more than anything else. Like, we spent longer on this puzzle than anything else in this game. Okay, so now we've got a cowbell sound and a spin sound together. So that means we need to go southwest. And I keep going the wrong turning the wrong way, because apparently I don't know my east from my west. So, southwest. There we go. It is so dope, Jane. It's so dope. So, Jane, now that you've seen basically all of this game, well, you'll see it. You'll see it soon. We'll finish tonight. Um, you're gonna have to, uh, you're gonna have to just play the next one. You're gonna have to go play Riven. <laughs> so you can experience that. I think this was spin? Yes. Okay, if you ever forget, you can push the button again and it'll play the sound for you that you're supposed to go. So, west. Alright, so now we've got a spin and a clink sound. So we're going to go northwest. It's all about the sounds. I mean, how often in games now do you have sound puzzles? Like, I feel like it's not nearly as much of a thing. Like, it's just not really, it's not really a thing that caught on, you know? Alright, so now we've got a clink sound and an exhaust sound. So that's going to take us northeast. Nope. I keep turning the wrong way. I guess the compass is backwards in my brain. I don't know. Northeast. So, like, imagine... Imagine, though, like, making a world and then it turns out to be this fantastic game. And the thing that also amazes me about this game is that it's not just good at the world building, I feel like it's also good at being a game. Like, it uses the strengths of what games are and what games can be to create something both completely new and still fully functional and elegant as a game. Like, I can't really imagine this experience in another medium. It wouldn't work. It is purely a video game experience. It could not be done anywhere else. Okay, so now we need to go southeast. 
And that is part of what makes Miss Magical and why they keep remaking it and why it has such a still dedicated fan base to this day. Okay, we're at the end. Let's see what's up. All right, we came so far, guys. That's where we came from, back there in that deep chasm. Oh, here's more of those beautiful crystals. Oh. Listen to that music. Now we're in the lava. And here we go. We can go back to mist. Warm. Playing this is making me really want to change all of my noises. <laughs> <laughs> that I use for my alerts into mist noises. They're just like, oh, they're so good. I mean, I love the EverQuest noises, but like, these are so good. It is, it's super cool, Lunar. I really should. Okay, here we go. All right, what you got to say for us, Akinar? What's up? Persuaded by his evil lies. <laughs> Do not release him. He killed my father. <laughs> he will kill you. It began when my brother, Cyrus, began to lust for riches. <laughs> he stole from the ages of mist. He hoarded up riches for himself. My father, father slept away his watchfulness. <laughs> my sick brother secretly pronounced himself king. King of the ages of mist, he said. <laughs> he began to look at me in disgust. His lowly brother. <laughs> I hated him. And then, and then Cyrus began to destroy the ages of mist. He burned their forests. He tore down their structures. He flooded their lands. He murdered their inhabitants. He completely destroyed all but four of the ages. <laughs> and he mostly destroyed those two because we saw no people. There was Cirrus also talking clever with a lion tongue of a serpent. <laughs> he convinced Father that it was I who had destroyed the ages. He convinced Father that it was I who was greedy for wealth and plunder. <sighs> and as Cirrus dealt the final blow, he tricked Father into believing that I was the murderer. <sighs> but Cirrus did not deal as fast a blow as he had planned. And his father died a slow death. He at last doubted my brother's clever lies. And so, in dying, father imprisoned us both. Wow. I'm sure from which of us the blow had come. I swear to you, what I see is the truth. Release me. You must release me. My brother is a deceitful liar and deserves punishment. I only wish vengeance for my dear father's wrongful murder. Believe me. Must only recover one additional page to release me from this prison. It is the easiest to find. <laughs> Go to the bookshelf. That's in this library. On the far side of the middle shelf, there's a burned book, which is different from the other burned books. This book is filled with patterns. Find pattern 158. <laughs> Mimic its design on the panel in the fireplace. Doing this will bring you to the last blue page. Oh. Remember, don't take the red page. Take only the blue page and return it quickly to me. Oh, and do not touch the green book. It is a clever trap to imprison those who have not been warned. <laughs> do not be tempted, for you will rot and die imprisoned as I am. Thanks for the tip. If you follow my 
instructions, it will be well worth your while. I promise you that. Go. Go. <laughs> okay. All right. Wow. I mean, he explained it pretty well there. Um, but let's see. Let's see what uh, Brother Cirrus has to say. All right, Cirrus. Tell me your side. Chill. His father was a master of books. He wrote hundreds of them, all describing and linking to the fantastic places and ages which he had discovered. The room in which you now stand was our father's library. It was here in this room on this island named Mist that he housed most of his books. But such a mist. By now, you have surely discovered. He says you did it. Our father was always watchful of our exploration. We grew up under his strict supervision. But when we came of age, he gave us unbridled access to his books. He began to leave our adventures more and more unchecked. Unsupervised as we were, my brother began to become disturbed. He began to take more from the missed ages than he had given. Soon he gained a interest in pleasure in the conquest and destruction of the other ages. It was horrific. His thirst for destruction. But alas, even I discovered his insanity. He had completely destroyed all of the missed ages but four. I wasted no time. In warning my father, I thought he would recognize Akhenaten's guilt. But in a fit of rage, he imprisoned both my brother and myself within the pages of these books, designed to hold us until he could judge which of us was guilty. To discover the truth, our father embarked on one final journey. However, he has never returned. Oh no. I can only assume that he perished along the way, leaving me an innocent trapped guy. But now you are here to release me. Mm. Listen carefully. You must find one more page, and I will be forever free. There is a book on the shelves in this library which is mostly burned but has a few pages still in it. It is the last book on the middle shelf. Find it. This book is filled with a variety of patterns. Find pattern 158. We create the door okay. of fireplace. This will bring you to the last red page. All right. Bring that page to me, and I will finally be released. Able to reward you, of course. All right, so the last red page and the last blue page are in the same spot. Okay. Don't touch the green book, guys. <sighs> okay. Well, let's go look. 158. So that's going to be this book over here. And 158 is what it opens to. It makes me want to touch the green book. <laughs> <laughs> Lunar is a team third option. All right, I'm just drawing this little pattern here. Wow, 
pour down like that. Okay, and they said put this inside the fireplace. So let's go check out that fireplace. Don't worry, I'm going to let you guys vote like red or blue like when we go to solve this. So uh, don't worry, Lunar. Oh, what happened? Nope, go back. Okay, here we go. So let's make it match that pattern we just saw. Oh, not that one. This one. I want a circular room like that. I agree. This library is like the coolest. All right, I think that's correct. Should be. Okay, I guess I need to push the button. Here we go. <gasps> it's the final red and blue page. And there's a green book. Okay, well, let's definitely pick up the two pages. Let's open this. What's up? Who the devil are you? I'm Karen. It's Atris. My sons, Cirrus and Akin. Yes. My books on this island, my library. My library. It contains my works, my writings. I wrote many books. Many books that link me to fantastic places. It's an art I learned from my father many years ago. But the red and blue books, those were different. I wrote those books to entrap over greedy explorers that might stumble upon my island of mist but i had no idea my own sons would be entrapped my sons cirrus and akinor we had many journeys together i gave them free reign to the books perhaps upon their lives i could see the greed growing in them i had not told them about the red and blue books their imaginations went wild they dreamed of riches and power they did not know the books were traps. They begged for access to those books, and of course I denied them. Oh, they devised a plan, an evil plan. I had no idea to what extent their greed had, had progressed. Their own mother, they used their own mother, oh, my dear Catherine, to lure me here to Dunedin. Of course, Except they removed a single page from my missed link book. Oh no, he's and trapped too. Okay. You, my friend, can bring that page to me. Oh, I pray you believe my story above the lies that my sons have told you. If you could find it in yourself to return that page to me here in Dunn, I could go to Mist and bring justice to my sons for what they've done. I must return to my writing. I pray that you believe me. Please hurry. Bring the page. Bring the page with you. Okay. So those two ripped pages that were in half that we found before, I'll read you what it says. I know we only ended up getting one of them, but... Who the devil are you? Oh, nope. I want to get out. Let me out. Uh... Just let me out. There we go. Okay. Um, so I'll read to you guys what that says, and we'll solve that this final puzzle. But while I'm showing that, 
let's run a poll for what we should choose. So yes, we're gonna start a poll. So who should we choose? Should we choose the red book, the blue book, or the green book? Because we can we're gonna go get that last page and we can put that in the green book, or we can put the last um blue book page in that book, or we can put the last red book page in that book. Okay, I'm gonna let this run for about three minutes. Okay, guys, what do you think? Red, blue, or green? While you're doing that, I will read to you what that those pages say. Yes, you only get to do one. All right, marker switch vault access, Island of Mist. The vault is located in a very plain view on the Island of Mist, and access can be achieved very easily if the simple instructions are followed. First, locate each of the marker switches on the island. Done. We've got all eight. Turn every, turn all of these switches to the on position. Done. We've done that. Then go to the dock as the final step and turn the marker switch there to the off position. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go into the dock and we're gonna turn that to the off position to get that final page that we can use for the green book. So there are multiple endings. Yes, Lunar, there are multiple endings to this game. We can only choose one. So here we go, we're gonna get, there's turn this off, and here we go, the last page. Okay, so we've got a red plate page, a blue page, and we've got the white page that we can use to help Atris in the in the book for Dunny. No, I turned it on so you can vote multiple times. You can use your channel points to vote more if you want to. Okay. So let me go ahead and we're gonna save. Yes. Okay. All right. So how's the poll going? All right, so I see some votes for green book and I see a vote for blue book. <laughs> Who voted for the blue book? Who voted for the blue book? I'm gonna vote. I'll, I'll give another vote to the blue book. Okay, someone has to tiebreaker. I don't see a vote. Um, I'm not sure, Kitty, it's definitely there, but maybe Twitch isn't showing it to you. What would you vote for if you could vote, uh, Kitty? And I'll just count it mentally. Red, blue, or green? Blue, okay. Blue? Okay, Kitty wants blue book, Jane wants blue book. On mobile it doesn't show. Oh, that's annoying. We have one person voting for red book. Oh, there's another blue book vote. Uh-oh, no, another green book vote. Y'all better use your channel points to jack it up. It's almost done. It's almost done. <laughs> it's tied between green and blue right now. So we need a tiebreaker. Oh, more votes for blue. Oh, more votes for green. Race, guys. We can race. It's almost counting down. Looks like just a few more seconds, guys. <laughs> Y'all keeping them tied up. Okay. The final is a tie between blue and green. <laughs> um, oh my god i think lunar you were the main one that voted for green because it said you contributed quite a lot of channel points but here we go kitty actually contributed some bits um and i think kitty you were voting for we were voting for the blue book right not the green book kitty kitty confirm we'll go with what choice you had since you contributed some bits um to whatever your vote was oh i didn't realize that but no regrets <laughs> it's okay it's okay Oh, you want some blue ears? Okay, we'll switch to blue ears. Kitty, what did you vote for? Which one did you vote for? We'll go with that one since you spent bits. I also voted for red because I felt bad. Blue, okay. All right, guys. All right, guys, so we're going with Akinar. We're going with Akinar in the blue book. Let's see what happens. Let's give him his final page. Oh, my God. 
do you feel, my friend? <laughs> and what have we here? Perhaps the pages you worked so hard for. <laughs> Oops. This dick. <laughs> He's totally unhinged. Maybe someone will rescue you someday. <laughs> you just ripping pages. Yes, yes. We're trapped forever, y'all. Oh no! Now we can't even see. You lose. <laughs> Bye, world. We're trapped in the blue book forever now. See you never again. Bye. This is all we get. End of game. <laughs> oh, well, all of that work for nothing. Credits time. <laughs> all right, guys. Do y'all want to see the real ending? I'll show y'all the real ending. For completion's sake. Yes. I'm glad y'all enjoyed um, Akinar, though. He is also my favorite. I feel like I won. You did, Jane. You win every time. For completion's sake, I will show the real good ending so that y'all can see it and um, so that anybody watching the VODs also knows how you actually can beat this game and what actually happens at the end. So this is the real true ending. It is helping Atris and doing the green book. So we gotta come back in here. I owe you one better time. <laughs> no, I'm glad y'all picked one of those. Um, that way you get to see one of the bad endings. And spoilers, you can do the same thing with the other brother. So if you want maniacal laughter, or if you want like smooth talking coldness, whichever your flavor of evil you prefer, you can have in this game. It is an equal opportunity uh, for evilness. All right, let's push you to button. Here we go. Have you found the missing page? Okay. Come on then. All right, yes, I found it. Let's go. Ah, my friend, you've returned. And the page, did you bring the page? You've done the right thing. I have a difficult choice to make. My sons have betrayed me. I know what I must do. I shall return shortly. Bye, Atris. See you later. So this is Dunny. It's underground. You can't really go anywhere. I know these look like little passageways, but they're not. It's just this room. Oh, he back. 
What's up, Beatrice? Mm. It is done. I have many questions for you, my friend, but my fighting cannot wait. I fear that my long delay may have already had a catastrophic impact on the world in which my wife, Catherine, is now being held hostage. <gasps> oh no! Sorry, but all I have to offer you is the library on the island of Mist and the books that are contained there. Feel free to explore at your leisure. I hope you find your exploration satisfying. You'll no longer have my sons to deal with. Oh, and one more thing. I'm fighting a foe much greater than my sons could ever imagine. At some point in the future, find it necessary to request your assistance okay until that point i'm afraid you'll enjoy the explorations from my library on mist thank you you're welcome maybe next time don't re book. raise such greedy bastards this linking book to return to mist all right so that's it now after you beat the game with the good ending that's the you know, quote unquote, like correct canon ending. Um, you can travel around to any of the different ages. You can travel around the island. You can explore further anything that you want to. If you really enjoyed spending time in any of the ages, you can do that. You basically have free reign at this point. There's nothing else specifically that you have to do or unlock, but that's it. And you'll notice the red and blue books are gone. Um, only ash behind so you have to assume that atris just straight up killed his sons that is that is what it looks like happens at the end of this game <laughs> all right guys so that's that's missed uh one of my all-time absolute most favorite games in the world um this game taught me so much it really is it really is like a huge part of why my brain is wired the way that it's wired. Thank you for the applause, Luna. Um, I mean, people, a lot of people learn, you know, about world building and, and things like that from, uh, from reading Tolkien and fantasy novels, but really my introduction to it, the whole concept of it and the whole idea of, of that as a creative outlet was with this game. Just the idea that you could write something down and it would become a real world that you could go to completely fascinated me as a child and and still fascinates me now i think that this is this is a franchise that could get so much more development like could you imagine a, a missed tv show there was one in development once upon a time as i understand it but it never really went anywhere so we have several games um we have the book series and uh and that's the pieces of mist that we have i'm just cleaning up a little here as i'm kind of doing my little talking wrap up guys um Okay, let's find someone to raid. We switch back to the webcam only. There we go. And we'll go to Twitch. All right, let's see. Let's see who's online. Okay, Venom is. Venom's been um, streaming a lot around this time of day. I feel like we've been raiding him a lot, but that's good. That's good. He's doing Dead by Daylight again. And here's my, here's my notes. What's up, lady? Here's my notes, so you can see everything that we wrote down that helped us solve this game. All right, let's go right into Venom, y'all. Oh, I'm all super white again. I think that happens. That must happen when I put the uh, put the note notepad up. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Venom. One, 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 eight, eight. Okay, there we go. All right. Um, on Saturday, guys, we are going to be doing a community stream. We're going to be playing Stardew Valley, so please join me for that. Get the farmer role in the Discord if you're interested. I'm still all white. That's beautiful. Um, there we go. There's the Discord if you want to join and, and do that. And um, then next week here on Artistic License on Thursday, we'll be going back to Final Fantasy X and uh, working some more on the Celestial Weapons in particular, finishing up the monster capturing and playing some Blitzball. All right, guys, y'all have fun in Venom stream watching um, Dead by Daylight. Thank you so much. And of course, don't forget, as always, to make it a great day.